Today I'm very excited to finally present you with an interview with my technician LJ. He was also featured in this video about piano tuning process. So if you haven't seen it, please go ahead and check it out. For those who are new to my channel, my name is Akira. I'm a pianist, piano teacher, and a translator who's lived in three different countries. On my channel, I'm posting videos of my performances, topics related to and not related to music. If you haven't done so, please subscribe and hit the notification button so you won't miss my future videos. LJ is a very good and busy piano technician with lots of individual and institutional clients. So I'm really grateful that he put some time aside for this interview for our channel. Our conversation really took off and it became a very long video. So this is going to be presented in two parts. Before I start, as usual, I want to say a huge thank you to all of my supporters from Patreon.com and my YouTube membership. These videos take a lot of effort and time to create, and your support has been huge encouragement as I try to grow this channel little by little. And if you're kind enough to support me for 3 or $10 per month, I'll leave a link to my Patreon page in the description. You can also support this channel by joining our YouTube membership right here. Alright, without further ado, let's start. Today we have my technician LJ here and we can ask a bunch of questions about tuning and how he became a technician. LJ, thank you for coming today. Absolutely, thanks for having me. Pleasure, and you do such a good job with these pianos and I'm so excited to ask all questions about, um, about tuning and the things that I don't know about very much. Yeah. Um, so, first of all, um, can you introduce yourself to the audience? Sure. Hi, I'm LJ. Uh, I am the owner of Philly Piano Tuning. We are a full-service piano maintenance company serving the greater Philadelphia area. Great. So, my first question is, how did you even become a piano technician? Like, I've never heard of any schools or I've never seen an advertisement of a piano technician school. So, what was the first step? So the first step for me was what we call the correspondence course. There are a few you can choose from. I choose, chose the American School of Piano Tuning. You get a kit that has tools. It has a binder full of information that guides you through the beginning stages of learning tuning and technical repair. And at the end of each chapter, you fill out an exam, which you then send in to um, the American School of Piano Tuning, and they give you a grade. So at the end, you become, I believe, this was many years ago at this point, but I believe they call you a certified um, piano tuner or technician. But it's not, you don't sit down and take any kind of exams. You just write out the paper. They tell you if you answered it correctly. And then, okay. and then they say, on you go, you are, you are now oh, a certified I technician. See. So it's like a piano teacher, like you can, anybody can call yourself a technician if you want to. Yes, which is a little dangerous because you don't always know uh, who necessarily has the best skill set and who knows what they're doing. Um, uh -huh. But yeah, so that was step one. And then uh, step two, I met a technician who knew of the company Cunningham Piano Company, which is a local uh, piano retailer and restoration company here in Philadelphia. And he recommended I go to Cunningham to get more of my training. So the majority of my training um, came from Cunningham where I was a factory restoration technician. We were restoring Steinways, Busendorfers, Yamahas, basically anything you can imagine. We were tuning it, repairing it, restoring it, new parts, new finishes, everything under the sun we did there. Cool. So how many pianos do you, would you say that you need to tune before you become a full-fledged, skilled technician? Sure. To become a competent technician, I would say more than 500 before you start going out into the home. Wow. Now, to be clear, that is not how it works. Usually people start tuning pianos for their families, for their friends, for local churches, um, to get experience, which I don't necessarily think is the best way to practice. Um, but because the schooling and the technical trades are pretty expensive, that is usually the way that people start. I see. <laughs> so that's, that's very interesting because that's how you usually start teaching too, like start teaching your cousins or start teaching you know, someone you know. So yeah, that's, that's very, very, very similar to how you become a piano teacher. Sure. I've seen some of those online piano tuning schools because that's one of the careers I was thinking when I was fresh out of college sure. many decades ago. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so um, I didn't know it was going to actually work, but I guess it's, it, it's still a valid way to become a technician, the first step. Yes, and I think um, 
because of all of the uh, opportunity for online education now, a lot of the people teaching online technical skills, such as piano tuning and repair, um, they are technicians themselves. They're professional technicians. They are working on pianos all day long, so they have the experience to back up what they're teaching. Um, so yeah, it's definitely, it's something worth considering. I think there are, uh, there are some technicians who would argue that the more reputable schools are where you should start. But if you can do a good job and you have the technical competence to accomplish piano tuning and repair, the online courses are absolutely acceptable. Wow. Should I take one of those courses and learn how to tune these pianos? I think you would have a lot of fun. It's very hard though. Um, <laughs> tuning is uh, a practiced skill. A lot of people can hear right away what they need to hear for tuning, but to be to get and gain the mechanical movement with your arm, that's what takes a lot of time uh, and a lot of practice. Okay, so that kind of answers the next question a little bit, but should we be tuning our own pianos? Like, Why can't we tune our own pianos? Because every other instrument you play, violin or guitar, you tune it before you play. True, yeah, and my only, the only reason I would say no to that is because of the the risk of damaging the piano. If you don't know how to tune a piano quickly and efficiently, you can put an undue amount of stress and strain on the tuning system, the pins, the strings, the pin block, and then at some point you may even break a string. Um, you may get the piano so far out of tune that you can't get it back into tune, and then you have to call your technician to come out and repair it for you. So there, I, to your point, people tune their violins every time before they play them. But they also have a certain level of technical competence to correct a mistake if something happens. I'm assuming most violinists are able to change a string. Right. <laughs> I hope so. Um, but it's, it's, I think the piano is just more complicated and there's so many more parts and so many more things that can break that it's probably better to leave it up to a technician. I see. Yeah. And then there are 230 strings about. <laughs> Correct. So how long does it take to tune one piano? Uh, it depends on the piano. I would say anywhere, and this is going to be a wide range, but anywhere from 45 minutes to two hours. And what makes the time vary is how often the piano has been tuned before I sit down to tune it. The condition of the piano, meaning um, are, is there rust on the strings? Are there any broken parts? Does anything need to be repaired before I tune it? Um, and then some pianos are actually just more difficult to tune than others. Uh, you have a Steinway and a Yamaha, both beautiful pianos. Thank you. But believe it or not, the Steinway is a little bit trickier to tune because the, the tuning system, meaning the strings, the pins, and the pin block, feel different than the Yamaha piano. So it takes a little bit more time and effort to get the Steinway in tune than the Yamaha. And that has been true since I've started tuning pianos. Steinways always take a little bit more time uh, to tune. Wow. Well, that's very interesting. Yeah. So 45 minutes to an hour, you said? Two hours. Two hours. So 45 minutes to two hours. If I try to tune it every time I practice, then that's going to be time I'll be spending. Absolutely. Yeah. <laughs> and tuning goes off every hour, right? Oh yeah, so it changes with the humidity and the temperature. So the hardest thing about tuning is that it is a, or what I should say, the hardest thing about an excellent tuning is that it is a moment in time. So you think of a concert level tuning, a studio recording. What you hear in that moment is however many minutes or hours that that piano will stay in tune to that level. The second you start playing on it, especially if you're playing a really boisterous, loud, uh, you know, a piece with lots of chords and lots of glissandos, you are slowly but surely knocking the piano out of tune. So the piano, after I've tuned it or another technician has tuned it, is a moment in time. So it, for you to tune it every time before you play, you'd be wasting a lot of time and also you'd be uh, very critical of the tuning and your music each time you play. So right. it's kind of something that's best just to not think about and let a technician <laughs> take care of. <laughs> yep, I see. It's really a constant battle. Yes, every time. Wow. So how often should an average student tune their pianos? 
Sure, that's a good question. My company, I recommend if you are a beginning student, you're not playing all that often, you can tune it once a year and the piano should stay in good shape. Okay. I will have to do more work each tuning visit if you only tune it once a year. The recommended amount of times to tune it, and this is based on piano manufacturers, is two to four times a year. Um, if you want your piano to stay in optimal condition, you want to tune it at least twice a year. And if you want more things to be accomplished, saying repair, voicing, regulation, then you need to go to the three and the four times a year. I see. But for, yeah. the, but for the average student, once or twice a year is very acceptable. Okay. I have a feeling that I'm the only one who's tuning three to four times a year in our studio. I would say that that is probably true. It is hard to convince piano teachers and uh, musical institutions to tune their pianos more than twice a year. The main reason for that, I would say, is that it is expensive. It's yeah. very expensive, and I understand that, um, and I sympathize with that, but you and your students benefit greatly from having the pianos tuned more than twice a year. I think so. Yeah, I mean, as a studio owner, it's, it's definitely costly to tune it that often, but then that'll benefit everybody in our studio. Correct. Yeah, your students will always hear the piano at pitch. They will always have a pleasing sounding piano, a piano that sounds good, a piano that feels good, uh, and a piano that really serves whatever you're teaching them and whatever music they're playing. Yeah, to me, it just feels like a cost of business, that something you just have to pay for if you want to have a good studio. Absolutely. So what else do you do when you tune the piano? When we say tuning, everybody thinks about is you have a hammer and turn the tuning pins sure. to change the pitches. Absolutely. But is there any other work that you're doing every time you tune the piano? Yes, so the first things that I like to focus on aside from tuning are cleaning. We want the piano to be clean because if you have dust and you have, sometimes there's pencils and things inside of the piano, that makes it harder to tune the piano and it also can lead to damage. So when you have dust in your piano, it also attracts moisture and the moisture and the dust sit on top of the metal parts of your piano and that starts to cause corrosion and rust and all of those things combine to make tuning harder. So I like to focus on, number one, let's make sure the piano is clean and in good repair. Then we can tune the piano, because at that point the piano is prepped and ready to go, the tuning should be relatively easy. After we tune the piano, and I think this was made clear in your previous video, that um, we then have to do what we call voicing or tonal regulation. So sometimes the hammer is not striking all three strings simultaneously. Sometimes hammers are a little bit brighter than others, which makes one note louder or softer than an adjacent note. So we take care of things like that. And then we also take care of um, what we call regulation, which is really just the adjustment of the moving parts of the action. It's what makes the piano able to repeat quickly, and it's what makes the piano um, easy to play for students and players of all skill levels. So the main three are tuning, voicing, and regulation. I see. So if you tune the piano more often, then those maintenance work will be distributed more evenly throughout. Correctly, absolutely. So the more often you tune your piano, the less time it takes to tune the piano, which leaves more time in an appointment to take care of regulation and voicing. And for me as a technician in my business, that allows me to do more for you and more for your piano without charging. Um, there's nothing wrong with this, but a lot of technicians will tune and then charge addi additional fees for voicing and regulation. But if you tune your piano often enough, there is additional time in the appointment window to take care of those, th those things without having to charge for them, which is uh, my preferred method of, uh, of uh, operating as a business owner. Right, and I, I think I mentioned that in the last video as well, but I guess that was true. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Yeah, and it's, it's, it's about giving you the most value. So if you, even if you only tune your piano twice a year, that always gives me 10, 15 minutes extra to do some, either some cleaning, some voicing, or some regulation. So it's really, you're trying to give um, the pianists the most value especially because it's very expensive. <laughs> I mean, you pay so much money for the piano, so you want to keep it, right? <laughs> yeah, absolutely, yeah. Thank you for watching. We'll ask more questions to LJ in the second part of the video.